Chris, where are you right now? Um, in England. How about that? Oh yeah, that's right. Fieldmaker. Dimitri. Hey man. Hey. Hey buddy, how are you? Doing, doing good. I think that is that the next time? Angelo Pina, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, really great to see you guys. Can't wait to see you. And are you coming to Newark? Yeah, I am. Awesome, yeah, man. Am. Well, I'll see you there. Carl's interested in in this as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, I told him about it. He's like, yeah, let's. Yeah, where do I send the money? He said, where do I send the money? <laughs> Welcome and thank you for joining us. And I have here Angelo, my partner in Phoenix, Arizona. Right now we are here and working on exciting projects. So I just want to kind of talk about what we got here going. And uh, then after that, I'll show you the studio. I'm going to introduce Angelo and I, I want him to talk like how we started and uh, how we ended up here right now. Hey guys, so Angelo Pena here. I live in uh, Chandler, which is about 20 minutes from downtown Phoenix, or where we're located here. And uh, I met Dimitri at, uh, it's actually, it's pretty cool. I'm wearing a gray method shirt right now, uh, but it was back in November in Atlanta um, for the, you know, Creative Business Mastermind. And uh, after one of the nights, you know, Dimitri was like, I want to take you guys to my uh, escape room and show you guys around. Um, and he took us and I was really impressed and, you know, thought it was an awesome concept, but, you know, talking to him more, he's like, what do you think about opening escape rooms, um, or even actually in places across the country? And, you know, he's like, it's a saturated market, but there's something else I've been working on. And then that's when he introduced me to spin art. Um, and, you know, we formed a, a partnership in December. So just, uh, shortly after we met in November and, um, you know, I'm, was we started looking for the space right away it took us a couple months to locate this location and then it took us a couple more months to negotiate the rent in terms that we wanted um but uh but yeah that's how we met and and super excited to be a part of this project and think it has a lot of potential especially with uh the location and and uh space that we have here so super excited this location particularly it's like 30 3300 square feet about and it's located in a midtown so like literally five minutes away from downtown uh phoenix arizona exciting place uh we've been looking for a few months we got actually lucky that we found it so quick because in some other areas honestly it took me one of the places like eight months to find a good space and um, what's important like a lot of people asking okay where do we start well, first we start with operating agreement. We start with uh, who is going to be responsible for what, what is needed for the business. So we discuss this, you know, on, on a conference call and basically see, okay, what can you bring to the table? You know, there's few things which I'm usually looking for. I'm looking for owner operator, somebody who's local, somebody who can operate the business or another option. I'm looking for investor. So strictly investor, somebody who can come up with the money and we can do the rest so if i'm working with just an investor then i'm still going to look for another partner who's going to be owner operator you know in the local market so for example if an investor is just an, in, interested in he has a money and he does he doesn't matter for him on which market we're going to be then again i'm going to look in a market which i'm thinking it's going to be successful from geico and looking for the partner there and this is how we structure the deals sometimes also um some people just want to be on investment side and just get a uh, like hard money loan and be just hard money lender i'm working with them as well then in this case i can become investor for the project so i'm borrowing money from somebody uh, paying them, you know, between 10 and 15% interest rate. And then I'm investing this money in a project with somebody else who is going to be, you know, running it on a local market. So this is like a few ways how you can, you know, work with us and, and participate, right? Uh, this particular property, the reason why we like it and what we're looking for is between 1500 to my biggest property right now in Chicago, it's 4,500 square feet. I'm looking, I'm trying to find something where we, we need to have to do a least amount of renovations. So I'm looking for space which have, you know, some rooms that I can utilize and I'm hoping I don't need to do a lot of demolition. And this is why particularly we like this space. Um, so we not really fixed on an area of town because it's hard to find the suited space. So I'm usually looking everywhere just 
literally everywhere, like 50 mile radius, probably from the center of any town. And I'm, I'm looking what I can find in the suburbs. It might be a, a mall. Um, it might be just a, like retail plaza. It might be a small retail space like in downtown. So it really all depends. First, I want to see pool of spaces available. Then once I see it, I'm going to see, OK, this one needs more renovations. This one needs less renovations. Uh, this one have a, lo uh, a, a lot of parking available. This one doesn't have a lot of parking available. If there is not a lot of parking, well, how people get to the place? All this matters for us. So then the next step is going to be, OK, what kind of landlord do we have? Is it easy to negotiate with them? Are they flexible? Because we always want to ask them, OK, what kind of tenant improvements money they can provide? What kind of amount of free rent they can provide? And then what kind of personal guarantee they asking? This is the next question. So first I'm finding the properties available. Then I'm seeing, OK, this one's potentially with that amount of per square foot going to require us, you know, less work, right? So some areas going to be very expensive. But again, maybe there is some other things which attract us, you know, at the property. So I can find some property between $50 per square foot to, you know, $15 per square foot. Uh, this particular property, I believe 20. it was 21. Yeah, 21 per square foot. And again, and cam. So it came out to. So right now we're going to be, be paying 76. about 7600 per month for 3330 square feet, basically space. So just to give you an idea, uh, we have some spaces which we're paying about $12 per square foot. I've been looking in Miami recently, and there I found spaces between 25 and 35 per square foot. Uh, so this is the ranges. In, in each area, it's going to be different and unique. And so once I know how many like listings available, it's easy going to be determination. OK, I see the market values there just by amount of, you know, uh, listings available. And I can say, OK, so I can get something between this range and this range. And now I'm playing with the numbers and looking to understand, you know, we, where we want it to be. I prefer to have our crew who is dedicated to come to the project just like here. We have a five people crew, including me. So we assembled our, you know, tools and everything we packed and just drove here we have everything i ordered i built basically materials list in advance through 3d model of the space and we ordered all materials so once we arrive here the materials should be here dimitri chris here can i ask a question yeah sure target market size and population uh, yep. things like that just kind of look trying to see and then and of course later like for the investor side um what kind of startup cost is it per location? Kind of like what what exact cities are you looking for? Things like that. But yeah, market wise, smaller city I would go with. It's probably hundred thousand plus uh, population. Now it it doesn't mean that it is hundred thousand and then there's desert around, right? So we're talking about hundred thousand plus whatever surrounding areas, you know, it might be going up to like 500,000 suddenly, right? Uh, but I prefer definitely, I prefer the biggest cities. Uh, that's going to be my primarily as a goal at the beginning, right? Uh, but if I have a strong partner on a local market, on a smaller market, I'm totally going to be fine working with these markets as well. So it means that in a big area like, again, Chicago, New York or Los Angeles, I'm not that concerned because I can uh, I know that there will be a interest. And so I can even if needed to, I can hire somebody to run the place on a local smaller market. My partner is much more important because they're going to make a difference. You know, they're going to do outreach. They're going to be reaching to churches, to schools, to local businesses, and mm -hmm. it's going to make it or break it basically on a smaller on a smaller market. On a bigger market, it's just, you, you know, you do marketing, you do like ads and people just will, you know, will come. So that as far as investment, so my uh, rule of thumb, it takes about 100 grand to open the location and fund the first three months of operations. It's including, you know, deposit, including first month rent, 
uh, and, and everything else. Now, of course, if you're talking about big location, like 4,500 uh, square foot location and a lot of uh, renovations, then it can run, you know, up to 250,000 easily, right? But I am trying to stay in this range, like around 100,000. When it comes to the normal location, like lo locations you have now, is can you just kind of go over what the normal profit margin range is you see, um, as well as what kind of revenue these locations are doing? My first location in Atlanta, it's the smallest location. It's a thousand square feet. And we make about uh, 350,000 in sales. From it, after all expenses paid before taxes, basically EBITDA, it's around 130,000. Uh, each area is going to be different. It's going to be, you know, depending on a lot of, a lot of, you know, variables. In Chicago, just to give you an idea, my numbers are even stronger. Like in Chicago, in downtown, I have a location which is also 1,000 square feet. And I have not, so I have not been, you know, working with this full year. We just started from January 1st, but my sales there already surpassed my Atlanta sales. Now, with that being said, we have another location in uh, suburbs of Chicago, and it's a bigger location, 4,500 square feet, but it's doing smaller numbers. And then the one I went to, is that the 1,000 square foot one? Yes, correct. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, wow. Do you find a, a difference when they're paired with something like that axe throwing or compared to when they're standalone? Is there a difference in revenue? It's definitely helpful to have a Justin business uh, just because the word of mouth. So everyone who comes to my one business, they immediately want to be introduced to another business. Not mm -hmm. only that, I run specials on my website. If you buy like axe throwing experience, you have automatically ability to do add on of spin art and there is a link you can click on it you'll see our website you'll see details and you get basically i think 20 percent discount so a lot of people being introduced to this uh through that as well so yeah definitely beneficial to have something adjusting to it how do you feel about bolt-ons to existing businesses i love it Okay, because like if there's a possibility, yeah, I love it. You know, like like I own a Ninja Warrior gym. My bowling alley wouldn't be a good fit. It's too small of a city. But my Ninja Warrior gym on the main street in Huntsville has the highest traffic count in the city. I have twelve thousand square feet. I could probably I could probably wall off fifteen hundred square feet. That would be beautiful. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you have a list of customers who we can market to as well. I mean, it's it's about twenty five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the number one city in the country to live in, according to USA Today. So yeah, that'd be a cool location. Yeah. Cool. I'm just trying to I'm trying to think creatively because that could actually reduce your startup cost, probably cut them into a third for that location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Do you have like a projected break even or or some sort of formula for that for like an investor whether it's like so, a timeline or yes um if we start a new city completely new city it actually so I, I i normally say to be on the conservative side that first year there will be no profits just to be on the safe side uh if we get to the profits because now i'm you know enrolling more locations quicker and I, i'm becoming more proficient in it and with the market and everything, I think we can do uh, turn around profits faster. But again, to be on a conservative side, first year, don't expect any profits. But then the year, next year, it's it's usually like catches to the fire because it takes a amount of time to build this following. People need to come through the doors a specific amount. And then word of mouth is the biggest thing. Like and people, our concept is so easy because people normally whoever comes through the door, they just love it it's like it's so cool it's so fresh people just enjoy it so much and it's just like a wildfire usually mm -hmm. yeah love it um i think that's probably my only question so you got pretty much a b and c markets anything over a hundred thousand people yeah i'm interested i think carl carl's interested as well um by Which the way, be my uh, I'll tell you some, something else oh, very interesting. So uh, everyone who is watching, our primarily customers, you would be surprised if you have a decent 
African American community, you're going to be extremely successful. They just love this, just love it. Like I, I see it, it's so interesting, by the way. So in the suburbs, for example, we are primarily like uh, white Americans. Uh, they really like to bring their kids and they all about kids and family. With the African Americans on another side, they really right like to spend. They really like to come out and do the date nights, come out with the friends from work. It's just amazing, and, and it's adults coming. So it, it's interesting. But this is like our primarily, you know, customers. You do birthday parties. So if I have a space again, if I have a bigger space, then I do birthday parties. Uh, on our in our smaller spaces, the problem is we don't have party room. Right. So it's a challenge, but still people still come in, uh, do the birthdays and then they just do somewhere else and eat somewhere else. So in this studio, they're going to have two areas for the birthday parties. So we're going to have uh, basically we can do we can run uh, two big parties of like 10, 10 people, 15 people uh, simultaneously and, and, and have birthdays here. So that's perfect location for that. Um, I'm going to have to go in a second. This is exactly what I need to know, though. What is your normal labor cost? So this is a good question, and it's going to depend. Um, my cost right now. So I have usually I have a general manager, right, who is making thirty six thousand right now. So they are salary employee, and then we have uh, another full timer usually who makes depends on the market about fifteen to eighteen per, per hour, and then we have uh, like two or three or four part timers who is usually make about. 14 to like 17 per hour. Again, depends on the market. Or in a smaller city, it's going to be probably less. Uh, in a bigger city, it's going to be, it's going to be, it might be considerably more. Yeah. Okay. Sweet, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you having me on. Didn't mean to ask you all these questions earlier. No, no, that's a good question. Everyone would be interested to, to, to hear it too. Cool. Yeah, man. We we'll appreciate it. We're going, uh, we have a meeting with a salesperson here, like randomly in the in English countryside. So I've got to go do that. So. Nice. But, All right. Hey, it's good seeing you. Yeah, good seeing Very you guys. See you later. I'll be in touch. All right. Now, in the meantime, so I'm going to switch to a different camera and we're actually going to let's do a walk through through the property so you can actually see how it looks like. All right. So now I'm on the phone uh, and we're going to walk around. So hold on. I'm going to switch the camera this way. Is this better? Oh, yeah, it totally works. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So this is the main entrance of our studio. And this is where we're going to have a sign where people are going to be taking pictures. So this is existing counter and we're going to use it. And this is why I like this space, because again, in this space, we're going to use everything. We don't need to do like almost nothing. And this is what's beautiful, because like just to give you an idea to build the desk like this uh, right now in Chicago, I'm spending twenty five hundred dollars to build like half halfway uh, desk like this, so le less than that. So this is expensive stuff. And then, OK, over here. So by the way, we've been here only. This is our third day at the job site, just to give you an idea. So this is going to be the area where we're going to have bicycle spin art. Um, if you haven't seen our bicycle spin art, I suggest go to TikTok and just do a bicycle spin art uh, and you'll see us. This is the bicycles we're getting ready uh to redo and this is going to be the station so there will be a four stations one two three and four where people are going to be doing a lot of fun stuff uh beautiful wall over here we're going to keep it as it is we have a, a plenty of lights which is also nice we have plenty of window space we're going to do some vinyl uh in the windows and by the way the street is awesome here yeah, light rail uh, stop right here in front of us, which is super cool. And actually, if you go outside, let me show you. So this is a very, very busy street. And this is how the place looks like. So this is multi-story. There is apartments and on the first floor there is offices. And I think downtown is this way, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me get back and we have ice cream shop next door, which is cool. So this is not going to be a main door. Uh, this is going to be a side door. 
This is how it looks. A lot of space, so we're going to set up some seating area over here. We're going to have some tables over here so people can celebrate. We're going to have uh, our dryer over there set up so we can dry the canvases in three minutes or less. So plenty of space off here. There was a window. We already kind of, you know, put a shit rock here. We're going to be finishing and repainting this area. There was something, I guess, removed from the walls uh, as well. Look at this light. I mean, this is like one of the kind, super cool, and we're just getting it with the space. Uh, we also have a video camera system installed. Actually, right now, uh, our IT guy working, uh, making sure that we can utilize them. So this is uh, also a bonus, like each camera costs like 100 bucks at least. Then over here, we're going to have a, uh, a regular spin art. So we're going to have a tables here. If you want to see how the regular spin art looks like, Google spin art Atlanta uh, or go on a TikTok and you'll see the videos how the tables look like. So over here, one of the things landlord asked us not to damage this wall, not to get paint on it, not to get anything on it. So right now we're building basically another wall and we're going to put some coverings on it so paint cannot get on it. So this is just because of the landlord we're doing that. To protect the floors, as you can see, we usually put uh, MDF, I think it's called MDF or something. It's like thin uh, one eighth thickness like material like this. So what happens is the paint going to build up, but then once we need to look uh, uh, vacate the property sometime in the future, maybe, I don't know, in 50 years, uh, <laughs> we can remove the sheets and then the floor is ready to go for the next landlord or for the next tenant. So we don't have to worry about it, like fixing it afterwards. So over here, this is the hallway. This used to be a kitchen. And so we taking over this kitchen and changing it. There will be a sinks where people are going to be able to um, wash their hands, which is perfect. We have the food and the landlord asked us to not mess up the food. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a wall in front of it. And just that's it. It's going to be staying, uh, staying intact. Uh, once we're going to be done again, they can just knock down this wall and, you know, they're going to have their kitchen back operational. Over here, we have a fire sprinkler system side and we need to frame it. So we're going to do a small wall with the door and it's going to be framed. Over here, electrical panel, panel, same thing. We're planning to uh, make a small cabinet basically with the door where they can walk in and do whatever, but we just don't want customers to be messing with it. And it's going to be a splatter studio side. So uh, splatter studio is the place where you come in. There is a canvas uh, hanging on a walls and you got a paint bomb. You got a balloons with the paint. You got uh, squid guns like for the kids playing in the water and they're going to be just throwing it. There will be a lights um, like cool lights and UV lights and we use in a splatter studio. We use a UV paint, which is super cool. So it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be room number one for splatter studio. And then over here, we're going to have a room number two for Splatter Studio. So we're going to have ability to run two groups. And in this sized room, we can actually have up to 12 to 15 people participating at once, which is nice. So, you know, bigger groups can come in and, and just have a blast in this room. So, again, we don't need to redo much. Uh, we're just going to, you know, put our white material on a, on a, on a wall so it's easier to clean. Uh, paint from the walls and stuff. And over here, we're going to build another wall as well to protect all of this from customers. And we're going to install the door and customers can come in. Right now, we're playing around, you can see here, with the security system, trying to make sure that existing one we can make work. If not, we're actually going to order our stuff and just replace it. So you can see the cameras here, the cables here. It actually saves us quite a bit. By the way, take a look. I'm not sure what's up with this, but this mouse is floating. I don't know why or how it's been glued to the wall. Don't ask me why. It's just, I don't know. I want to keep it like this. It's kind of cool. So this is the space on, on the back. It's important to have uh, easy access. So we have some parking. 
and it's a nice area. Our guys is taking a break while while we're doing this. Uh, all right, let's go back. By the way, so parking is important, guys. Uh, we always look in what's the parking situation, so we know, um, you know, basically we want to make sure that our customers can park. In this area, it's not ideal. Uh, there is not much dedicated parking to the area, but it's decent enough, I would say, that we still, you know, that the customers would be fine. For your like canvases and stuff like that, do you have a national distributor that you work with or do you try to look for local material? Like, Yeah, we, um, we have a national accounts and they deliver deliver locally everywhere. And we, because we have national accounts, we actually get a very good discounts on it. Not only on canvases, also on paint. We have national account on a, on a UV paint. We have national account right now on uh, on a regular paint. And we're saving like very considerable, considerable amount because of it now. Yeah, because of the amount of studios now I have. Before it was considerably more expensive. The spaces, it's, so this was a restaurant before maybe. Would you say that like if you were looking for spaces, um, knowing that perhaps there was a restaurant there before, that might be something you'd want to target? Or are there any um, businesses that like if you know they vacated, it's something that you know automatically generates interest for you to go look at the space? Retail. So normally retail is going to be our priority. Uh, this particular restaurant play, space uh, just kind of landlord was flexible enough to let us like reuse it. Right. So by the way, we we going through the change of um, permittable space because again, it's been restaurant. So right now we changing it to assembly. Um, and so this is something you have to consider when you're applying for a space like this. But yeah, normally it would be retail. And right. in regards to um, hours, you normally you like you watch the busy hours and you'll shut down the slow hours and stuff like that Monday through Sunday. Or how does that work? So during the week right now, we found uh, kind of the way how we do it. And I like how it works. Uh, we have a salary employee manager who is covering the during the week when it's slow. And then, so like Monday, Tuesday, for example, we would normally, if it's not a busy location, right? Monday, Tuesday, we'll do off. And then salary employee works the rest of the days, uh, like basically eight, eight hour days. And it comes out, I think, exactly to 40 hours. Uh, during the weekend, they uh, come a little bit later. So we open normally from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And during the weekend, they come normally later, like at 12 p.m. So somebody else, our employee, going to open they come at noon and they leave at eight and this is our busy time considered and then after that uh, you know they leave at eight and somebody close at 10 basically so they have eight hour shifts and it, it works like works really well so we're probably going to do another video once you know once we finish here and we'll show you know show the difference how it's going to look like um thank you for joining again a lot of people had interest to join but it's just odd time so this is why i decided to record this and once uh you know once we're done we'll post it so people can see it All right awesome. thank you guys for joining i really appreciate it and uh yeah we'll talk to you soon thank you guys super excited thank for you thanks all right bye-bye